Hi, my name is Adil Mughal. I'm a lecturer here at the Department of Mathematics at Aberystwyth University. And I'm Simon Cox. I'm Head of Department of Mathematics here at Aberystwyth, co-organising with Adil here. Well, the subject of the programme is packing problems, and I'm um, often asked when I'm out with friends or people I haven't met who don't know what I do, what a packing problem is. And so the way I like to describe it is, uh, given a pint glass and as many marbles as you wanted of the same size, how would you arrange the marbles in the pint glass so you could get as many of them in there as possible? That's an example of a packing problem. And so you can study this in many different ways. You can ask what happens if you try to carefully place the marbles in there so you can get as many as possible. That's when we look at ordered packings. But also scientists have looked at the problem of just pouring the marbles in there and then you create what are called random packings. And both of these have deep significance in many areas of physics, chemistry and biology. This is something that Adil has worked on for a long time and there was a period a few years ago when uh, we had to do everything online and so this uh, John Pack seminar series online started, Adil uh, with a group of um, colleagues um, bringing people together to share information to give seminars online and so, so that's the, the short version of the full title uh, PMV is uh, Geometry and Packing in Material Science and Biology. Uh, so we wanted to get people together to discuss all these aspects uh, from, from the sphere packing yeah. that you talked about to tetrahedra to um, icosahedra, how you use them to fill space uh, and um, bring together experts from different areas, mostly from simulation and theory, trying to ask uh, what we know, what we don't know, what you can prove, what you can't prove. Well, I'd like to begin by saying that I think the field of packing problem has exploded in recent years, partly driven by advances in computer simulations that allowed us to do things we couldn't do before, and as well as things are being made by experimental scientists in the laboratory, uh, allowing us to experiment with new ideas in this area. But I think there probably are a few things that uh, have not yet been tackled as deeply yet and I think one of those might be things where you're packing continuous objects like a like a stiff wire inside a cavity or um, a membrane inside a inside a, a container I think it's possibly the shape that your brain takes the folds and undulations that it has is a similar problem and um, so I think possibly one of the most famous problems in this area of things that have been studied is the packing of genetic material inside a, inside a virus capsid this sort of usually like a, an RNA chain which has to be packed inside a container under enormous pressure and uh, how it gets in there and how the RNA chain organizes itself inside the container into a dense packing arrangement. Some of this has been studied but I'm sure there's a lot of scope yet for people doing simulations uh, and theoretical work to improve and understand, uh, get a greater understanding of this kind of stuff. And, and even though you'd said about um, the Kepler conjecture and that we now know the best way to pack spheres, of course, taking some inspiration from biology, it's not clear that natural systems do that. Mm. And so, I mean, we had to talk this morning about the transition from disordered to an ordered state. And how do you achieve that? Uh, what's the protocol? And uh, how do you understand these disordered packings in terms of perhaps their local structure? to be able to say something about the global structure uh, where there is no long range order. I mean, we talk about hyper uniformity, yes. yeah. uh, which is the complete opposite of probably what you see in, in these natural packings of spheres and other objects in biology. Yeah, and so there are other applications in biology of these structures which aren't perfectly ordered, even though I love looking at very <laughs> ordered things. highly ordered things, but it seems that nature often prefers a just a certain amount of dis interplay between order and disorder, particularly when it comes to materials in biology that have structural colour, that is colour that arises due to the placement of chitinous material and its arrangement. Um, and in this case, you often you don't want the colour to change too much depending on the angle you look at the object. And in highly ordered packing arrangements, that would be a problem, but with just the right amount of disorder it's possible to resolve this and they'll make the object appear fairly uniform in colour from different angles. One of the um, 
recent highlights in, in the field is actually from tiling. Um, and this is not to do with your bathroom uh, so much as um, how can you fill space with tiles of the same shape such that they never repeat, aperiodic, aperiodic tiling. And so we had Chaim Goodman Strauss, uh, it was one of the team who invented, discovered, or uh, determined the properties of the Einstein, uh, the single tile um, that uh, many people I think believed wasn't possible, uh, that can completely fill the plane but never repeat. And so he came, he told us about this, and he's now gone off to make a huge tiling in Newcastle, I think, uh, to do that with people there. And so here's an example of uh, just something that is two-dimensional and should be straightforward and really, really isn't. And so he told us something about the techniques that you would use to prove that something never repeats, the way in which you can generate tilings that don't repeat from uh, relatively straightforward rules. And then um, something else we were very keen to do as part of the programme uh, was to see how uh, art is inspired by science and perhaps both ways, uh, how science can be inspired by art. So during the first week we had two artists come, uh, both of whom really were inspired by bubble shapes. Um, so my field is packing foams, packing bubbles in foams, and so uh, they were able to tell us uh, what they'd done with some of the ideas about uh, uh, bubble chains, about scutoids, these uh, polyhedra that you can um, pack in, in curved, um, geometries uh, and so that was really impressive to see where they'd gone with um, jewellery, uh, with uh, arcade games, with foams and so on, very special. Yeah, I, I also recognise when I see some of these artists working that they they adopt, well, they use many of the same methods that we do, so they use things that look like computer simulations uh, but in ways that we would never have thought of doing, so they take them from a completely different perspective and in fact, from their perspective, they can be often be a lot more freer in terms of what they're going to do. So they're not thinking about how to explain the world around them. Or they might be, but you know, but they are ready to use their simulations to create artistic experiences. And uh, yeah, I, th I think I, I quite enjoy their perspective and I quite think maybe that's something I would enjoy trying to try to experiment with in the future. It's been an intense uh, three, almost four weeks, uh, but it's been fantastic to have people in Aberystwyth to come and see where we work, uh, to bring people to the seaside in the summer, and the sun is now shining. Um, and uh, for us and for our colleagues here, uh, the feeling that in this our 150th anniversary of Aberystwyth University, that people can come uh, and see what we do and interact with uh, the community here uh, and, and for us, to, for our colleagues here to learn about packing problems from someone other than, than us. Um, I've been visiting programs at the INI for a long time and I always thought it was a fantastic opportunity whenever I got to go there and the, to have the privilege to create that experience here at Aberystwyth at my home, home institution and bring all my friends and colleagues here has been an unparalleled experience.